welcome to uh, Span 312 Hopscotch, a uh, survey of Latin American literature. And today I'm delighted to have uh, with me Professor Sonia Roncador from the University of Texas at Austin. She's Professor of Brazilian Literature and Culture, and she's written extensively on that topic, including uh, a, a book on Poeticas do Empobrecimiento, uh, Poetics of Impoverishment, uh, in Clarice Lispector, because today we'll be talking about the Brazilian writer Clarice Lispector, particularly this book, The Hour of the Star, which is her last novel to be published. So, Sonia, Professor Rangado, it's it's uh, it's such a pleasure uh, uh, to have you here. Thank you so much uh, for doing this. And my first question is simply, how would you suggest going about approaching this text? Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me to be here. It's a pleasure. Um, yes, I mean, um, you just mentioned my uh, work on Clarice Lispector, um, um, uh, the poetics of impoverishment, and actually, uh, my, you know, the central argument of my book is that Lispector, she, uh, I mean, um, in the beginning of the 70s, uh, Lispector is already, um, you know, a, a well-established writer in Brazil, very present in the cultural, intellectual life, invited to go to many places. I mean, a visible person. But I think that um, it, it seems that there was a, some sort of a, a, a crisis, you know, in her career. Um, you know, uh, I, I have some hypothesis for that. But Liz Spector, what we notice is that um, there will be some new elements uh, in her writing. And I think that the hour of the star, you know, that she published in 1977, the year she actually died, right? Um, it would be a kind of a culmination of these changes that are already in place in some of her pre previous writings of the 70s. So, so my way basically of approaching the hour of the star is basically kind of, you know, uh, 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 looking at the big picture, looking at her, you know, work in general, and uh, trying to place it right. Because if you if you take the hour of the star and compare with her first works, you get. I mean, of course, that there would be a lot of Lispector's elements, right, that you, you're probably discussing with your students, or we may talk here about them. So you recognize Lispector, but there is also a lot of surprises. You know, the fact that she is writing about, you know, this uh, uh, a poor woman from the Northeast, you know, as we call in Brazil, a, a, ret a retirante, right, someone who re retires, retira, right? which is a term that is full of, um, you know, prejudice, right? I mean, the way that Brazilians from Rio and Sao Paulo, you know, the way that they, they look at these, you know, uh, poor people uh, migrating from the, 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 the poor areas uh, in the hinterlands of the North is, you know, is, a, is, is very cruel, right? So Liz Spector, uh, you know, she decides that she is going to write about, you know, a retirante, a Macabeia in Rio de Janeiro. So this is something that that you don't see in her early writings, right? This, 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 you know, this interest in bringing uh, uh, all the problems, you know, uh, around surrounding a retirante in Rio de Janeiro, you know, into her literature, right? I think that Liz Spector, she was, you know, more focused on a, a lot of women. I would say that in this way, you know, it's not changing. Uh, uh, most of Lispector's protagonists are female, uh, but, you know, they were mostly middle class, right? Middle class, white women living, you know, in urban settings, especially in Rio. Um, and then you have, you know, Macabea, you know, and, and she needs to make sense, right, of this character, right? Uh, so I think that, you know, going back to my, you know, line of thoughts, you know, if you compare to early works of Lispector, you're going to see all these surprises. 
But my my argument in this book is that actually, if you look at the Hour of the Star uh, um, uh, together with some of the works, you know, published, you know, uh, 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 close enough, you know, uh, the, within maybe three, four years, you know, before uh, the Hour of the Star, you're going to see a lot of resemblances, especially the, the ones that normally surprises, you know, uh, uh, surprise uh, people, right? I mean, Lee Spector will, uh, you know, uh, definitely incorporate more, you know, like working class people, you know, she starts, you know, uh, talking more about, you know, she, she talks about, she has a story published in 74 about a prostitute. She has a stories about homeless, about beggars, uh, not to mention her chronicles, her journalistic chronicles, which I think uh, 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 has an impact, you know, will have an impact in her fictional literature, because in her chronicles, she is basically expected, you know, as a, as a traditional chronicler, you know, in Brazil, you are expected to talk about the city, right? Um, and to talk about, you know, all the problems, you know, that a city, you know, may have, you know, imagine a city of a contrast like Rio, right? So, you know, uh, uh, so all this is already happening, you know, the Chronicles, she is writing for a major newspaper, is starting in 67 until 73. Uh, uh, then, you know, all the other stories that she, you know, um, uh, is publishing in the 70s. So I think that the hour of the star is really, you know, this masterwork, uh, but very very much in line with, uh, you know, with an affinity that to me is both, you know, in terms of uh, 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 themes, but also an affinity in terms of writing, you know. I think that there is a lot of uh, uh, questioning uh, uh, when when we see uh, the narrator, this male narrator, right, in the Hour of Star talking about, you know, the, the challenges of writing about this retirante, right? He says that I will need to invent an impoverished, right, an impoverished writing, an impoverished style, right? I don't I don't always think that he gives the best answers. I think that, you know, there are some silly, you know, things there that he needs to I don't know, he cannot eat the normal things that he eats. He will drink white white wine. I, I don't understand that, you know, detail. Uh but uh but you know, but it is uh an intellectual uh, who recognizes that in order to address a character like Maccabea, he can no longer write, and he says that explicitly, he can no longer write the way that he had been writing up until that moment. So, so he announces that he will do something different now, right? And it's something that Maccabea itself, that reality is imposing, right? Um, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, so my, basically my approach, uh, is, uh, 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 situating, placing the hour of the star, um, together with, you know, her later or her late, you know, her later works, right? The works that, you know, she published, you know, later in her, uh, career. That's, uh, you know, that's my, Yeah. This is, this, <laughs> this is all great. This is fantastic. <laughs> what, what you're saying reminds me, a book she published about 10, more than 10 years earlier was The Passion According to G.H., which is yeah. sparked by a maid moving out. So we have a middle-class yeah. woman who moves into what used to be the right. maid's room, and the maid's not there. And there's this absence, which leads um, with other things to this sort of reverie and, and a whole series right. of, of thoughts. And yeah. it's as though in the hour of the star, would you say that she's now trying to fill in that absence, that what was previously only an absence, she's trying to fill it in, but still very hesitantly, as you say, you know, still, uh, yes. it, it takes a long t time within the book, within what's a relatively short book, to actually get even to yes. the name of Maccabea. Yeah. Do you, yeah. I, I don't know why, how would you explain this hesitance? It's like she wants to write this, but it's, it's difficult. And the narrator tells us it's so hard to yes. write. I would say that there are, you know, 
many ways to uh, uh, to interpret, right? To read this uh, hesitancy, right? Um, uh, 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 probably one of the the most obvious ways, because you know uh, the narrator talks a lot about that, has to do with the fact that you know uh, Macabea is is the unfamiliar, right? I mean, Maccabea presents uh, uh, an unfamiliarity to the narrator in a way that um, he's not familiar, I mean, he's not used to. I mean, I think that Maccabea presents the unfamiliarity of gender for this, you know, fictional male, uh, you know, the uh, probably race, although it's, uh, she's vaguely described as, uh, a woman of color, but like uh, in Portuguese, we say cor de ferrugem. It's the rust, rust, rusty color that, you know, color of metal, you know, yeah. So that's the only reference to like skin color that I can recall, right, from reading The Hour of the Star. But there is also, of course, um, uh, the um, uh, the unfamiliarity with, you know, with her uh, economic material, right? The Desti destitution, you know, needs, right? Uh, the hunger, right? She's eating pieces of paper in order to, you know, uh, uh, to be able to sleep, and right? Because she's so hungry, right, at night. So uh, um, uh, all these unfamiliarities um, uh, is already very challenging for a narrator that, you know, we're assuming is a middle class, you know, narrator who actually has a maid, right? Uh, uh, like I think twice in, in these moments of hesitation, he mentions the, you know, the coming in and going of uh, like a house cleaner, right? who, by the way, messes up with his papers. He's, you know, he says that one time he's, uh, he doesn't know where he left the description of something because the maid took away. So this is another interesting thing to uh, think about, right? But I think that Maccabea is presenting other unfamiliarities. I think that um, uh, uh, some of, some are not probably uh, things that he would be able to address by, I don't know, by maybe doing a sociological analysis, you know, of, of impoverishment in Brazil. I think that she is uh, 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 bringing uh, other, uh, uh, it's, it's strange, I mean, almost, you know, sometimes he's, he, he even questions how can a human being uh, live like that, you know, I mean, it, it, it it's so it's so extreme, right? That you know that it becomes uh, uh, almost like you know how am I going to be able to write about something that is almost nothing, right? <laughs> that this life that is. Uh, so lacking of facts of people of I mean how can I talk uh, how can I create a story without facts without so I think that Maccabea's uh, a, 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 po a, a poverty uh, 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 takes him to question uh, things about his writing that I, I would say that even goes away I mean it goes beyond uh, uh, you know, uh, what we could be seeing addressed by uh, maybe, as I'm saying, I mean, maybe, you know, social sciences studies or, you know, other types of fiction. I, mean, I think he is mentioning other things, right? So this is, I think, one, I think one way of uh, uh, talking about his uh, he hesitancy, right? Uh, but I, I do think that Lispector has, I mean, when you talk about the, uh, 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 the passion according to GH, I, I, I also see hesitancy there too. I, I, I think, I mean, of course that, you know, uh, 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 the hour of the stars you're saying, I mean, it, it's taken it to like an extreme, right? I mean, the, the story is only, uh, is, uh, you know, we are, we start reading something about Maccabea much later, right? There is a lot of, uh, postponement. Uh, but, uh, but I think that she's, um, uh, uh, she has been, she has been, I think, uh, 
uh, trying to write about uh, less maybe obvious things, things that probably there is this, there isn't still like a grammar, like a vocabulary uh, uh, for you know for that. Um, and but what I think it's uh, uh, incredible about, about the hour of the star is that I think that what she sees, uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know, Maccabe is almost nothing, etc. I you know I do think that it is part of the social problem. I don't think she is you know. <laughs> you know, like living the problem and uh, I don't know, and philosophizing, whatever, you no, know, people can say, but I think it, it, it is, I think this is part of the problem. This is part of, uh, you know, the, 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 the impoverishment that is, you know, being, you know, uh, 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 seen in, in this character, right? And by the way, she confesses that, you know, that she saw, <laughs> she talks about, she talks about a day, that she went to um, like a, a market, a very popular market in in Rio. It's uh, it's um, uh, it's a market in a neighborhood called São Conrado. No, no, not not São Conrado. I think I'm confusing. But anyways, there is this market that is uh, also uh, known as the market for the Northeasterners, because that's where, you know, you buy like food from from the North, Northeast. And Liz Spector, you probably know, she grew up in uh, in, in Recife, which is the capital of a, a Northeastern state. So she goes, she used to go a lot to this market, you know, to buy the foods that she probably grew up with. With. Um, and she says that one day she sees, you know, this young woman and she felt like compelled to, to write about her. Yeah. So, so that scene that we see uh, uh, in the novel apparently happened. She said that. She said so. <laughs> I, I wonder, I mean, reading the book um, and also from a, a we, we were talking briefly earlier, the, the problem also perhaps for Lispector is that there are sort of scripts for how to talk about such people. It's not as if they're completely absent from, from literary right. or cultural representations before. Right, right. O on the one hand, you have, I guess, the sort of, I don't know, fairy, almost fairy tale fantasy, which actually the fortune teller gives her that, you know, you'll meet, you'll meet this guy, yeah. this blonde like foreign angle. guy, <laughs> and, and everything will work out, right? That's the, right. the sort of fantasy yeah. and on the other hand you were you were talking about the fact that the spector might have been under some pressure to write more politically and in some ways there's a script for that too and what's interesting to me is the hour of the star doesn't follow it for instance there's a script which is the the resistant um uh struggling but also sort of fighting militant right working class in some ways yeah. and 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 Maccabea's not that, right? She she she's she's not no, that. She, no. she she's not the left wing no. heroine. Uh, so she's writing about these spectors writing about these um about a political thing, but not with the that framing, either the, the fairy tale framing of meeting your prince, the handsome prince right, take you off the right, street. Right, but on right, the other hand, yeah. not perhaps the typical left wing Latin American framing of the heroic subject the heroic yeah. work that subject either that's that's very interesting and and i i mean i think that she has her own way of uh, marking her place in a very long tradition of uh, you know like realist you know writings like social realism in brazil um, uh, that uh, uh, follow more, you know, the script, you know, especially the militant, you know, uh, uh, working class, you know, character, um, um, uh, or even, you know, the Maccabea's boyfriend. I think Maccabea's boyfriend, he fits more in a way, although, you know, he <laughs> uh, uh, he's, you know, not the e exemplary, right, uh, 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 working class person. But, you know, at least, you know, there is this, you know, the ambition, you know, the 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 the, the person who wants to be a, a political uh, a politician, et cetera. And 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 um, which, you know, uh, 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 can be very appealing. 
to a certain public, right? I'm, I'm here thinking of a woman that actually met Lee Spector, and there are some pictures of both, you know, if you check the internet, who used to be a slum dweller, you probably uh, uh, heard of her, Carolina Maria de Jesus, she was a slum, yeah, a slum dweller from, you know, Lee Spector's uh, generation. Uh, and she published this um, a book that became a bestseller in 1960 called The Child of the Dark, uh, uh, Quarto de Despejo, garbage room, it, I think it was the would be the literal translation. And um, you know, this woman, Carolina, you know, she uh, kind of she maybe she's a, a sort of a fairy tale that you know that the the readers liked at the time because she starts her life as a slum dweller. She starts writing from scratches of papers that she finds in garbage because she was also a, a, um, a paper, a garbage collector in the city of Sao Paulo. So she finds like, you know, a paper, like blank paper. And that's when she starts writing a book. And, and one day this journalist finds her, discovers her and decides to publish her book, right? So she will become, you know, a well-known person for a while. And that's why you're going to see Lee Spector and Carolina in some, you know, like book signing events. And, you know, we, you, we see pictures of, of both of them. Lee Spector is not writing uh, about, you know, uh, 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 I mean, th this is not her story. This is not her narrative. So I think it is very interesting that, you know, in a way she is, uh, finally, right, um, um, uh, uh, writing something that could be placed in a long tradition, you know, uh, the hour of the star has been compared, for instance, with uh, Barren Lives, Be the Sick, as by Graciliano Ramos, a you know, very traditional social realist writer. Um, in many ways, they, they have been compared. And so people, they are placing already the hour of the, of the start within this tradition. But I do think that um, uh, that she is um, she's doing something new there. I, I honestly, I don't know uh, from that generation, another writer, uh, you know, from her generation, uh, 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 who got, you know, uh, invested in this type of project, a project that, you know, as you saying, I mean, I agree, I think Rodrigo, I think this narrator is part of this script. It's an, it's a script of, of it's a, it's a new writing of, uh, of, of social realism. I I don't know if we can still use the 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 label, but but yes, you know, inscribing there, you know, this intellectual voice has it, and this is all part of you know uh, of of her way of doing right of writing poverty or bow poverty, right? And uh, and okay, that's wonderful that she's been place, you know, uh, uh, within a, a long tradition in Brazil, but she is a great innovator there. Yes, she's innovating. For, for that generation, she is innovating. I mean, talking about guilt, uh, talking about a lack of um, uh, even like uh, 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 the, the capacity, right? The capacity to imagine the life of Maccabea, right? The capacity, uh, uh, you know, to, to understand that, right? I mean, confessing uh, all those limitations, right? For someone who, you know, is still, someone who's still, uh, you know, part of that modernism, uh, you know, in places like Brazil and, and, and other Latin American nations, right? See, that you, you know, you see a different behavior, right? From, uh, from most writer. I think that there is a, an interesting component too that I see in other works of Lee Spector. It may be related to genre, uh, I don't know how to explore that, but there is what I, I called in my book an ethic of care. I think that it, there is an ethic of care there. That, that thing that is so unusual, imagine for that generation, 
you know, parts of the novel uh, when uh, Rodrigo says that all he wanted to do was to take her home, you know, and give her a bath and, and, and you know, that, that kind of thing that she also shows for other characters. Um, I, you know, I'm here thinking of a, a couple of chronicas about her maids. She has one housemaid who uh, 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 has like a mental problem. She has like, um, 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 uh, I, I don't know how to say that in English, but, you know, she has an out, outbreak, you say like a mental, like a, a outbreak. Mm -hmm. And Lispector needs to send her to a mental institution. But it's very interesting how she relates to that woman and all the desire to take care. And she has other texts when she talks about, you know, in Portuguese would be tomar conta, right? Tomar conta de, to take care of the world. She has one actual story called tomar conta do mundo, right? So uh, uh, there is something about an ethic of care there that, you know, could be explored. And I think that... Um, uh, is also part of this script that I totally agree with you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if I, yeah. <laughs> no, the, 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 this, is, this is, this is fantastic. And I, I'm just thinking, so, so she, in some ways I, I, inhabits some of those gestures of, of social realism, as, as you talk about, perhaps that's part of the, the construction of the character of the of the narrator of of Rodrigo. Yes, absolutely. She's a she's a northeasterner in in real. This was a a, a, a trope in social realism. You know, uh, starting in the thirties, there are tons of novels of a people leaving the northeast to the big cities of Sao Paulo and Rio. You know, so she follows that you know that track, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But but she's also interested in the in the sort of unacknowledged limits of of realism, the way in which realism is always to some extent right. a projection. I think. Right, right. And then I mentioned what you say about ethics because there's there's also she's also I think interested in the limits of ethics. I mean, in the end, Maccabea dies, mm -hmm. and, and there's this sense that the narrator yeah. could have saved her after all. Yes. To some extent, yeah. she's yeah. his creation. But 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 she dies and she sort of escapes both the narrator yes. and uh, I wonder if you could say something about that final. Yeah. Scene. Again, I mean, maybe maybe I should not do that a lot, but I'm always reading Lispector, you know, but thinking of other of her writings, you know, because um, uh, um, she it. it it's, it's she is if you know she in her uh, uh, story uh, uh, to take care of the world, for instance, you know, she says that she was born with that, you know, kind of a mission, <laughs> you know, maybe super like self, you know, grandiose. But she says, I was born with this mission. But there is it's very interesting because there is. Uh, uh, she always faces the limits of that, you know, uh, uh, wish or, you know, some kind of compulsion. She feels kind of compelled, but but she can't. I mean, when she talks about that housemaid who goes to the ment to the mental institution hospital, you know, at the end she said, "I can't do anything," you know, and she is like almost crying, you know, in her living room, smoking, and you know, knowing that you know it doesn't matter if she feels, you know. Uh, 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 compassion uh, for her characters. That's not gonna. That's not gonna change. Uh, uh, I mean, Maccabea can. She can't have. You know, uh, it, it, there is no place for the fairy tale that you know that the 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 the, the fortune teller, right? Um, and that is again. There is also another. Uh, um, it's a kind of um, a, a trope, right, in Brazilian literature, the, the presence of this fortune teller, right? Uh, I mean, you see that, you know, in Machado de Assis, 
is, right? The, the, the story is about fortune tellers, right? And uh, writers tend, all, tend, I don't know if it's all true, but they tend to kind of uh, uh, make some fun, right? I think that that fortune teller, right? I mean, she actually predicts anything, right? That the gringo would have blue or brown or, I mean, it, 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 she could not be wrong, right, about that. But uh, but I think that um, uh, uh, going back to uh, uh, to your question, I think it's it's great. I mean, it's a great point. But uh, but I think that um, uh, Liz Spector realizes that. I think she realizes the in the in the efficacy. Uh, you know, the, 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 there is no real effect. You know, uh, the, her. Um, care ethics you know that, that, that there is no effect that that there is no way of uh of, of changing or at least she cannot uh, change if something that you say in your lecture that i like a lot when you say that the reader that she's always bringing us right you know because i think that without a, a complicity you know if it is not going to be through a complicity, right, between the writers and the readers, you know, there will be no way to save Maccabea, right? Uh, that, that's how I read it. That's how I read it, no? Yeah. No, I, I agree. And that's what I love. The, the last, or almost the last sentence of the of the dedication, where she says, uh, she's look, it's an unfinished book. That, that's, yeah. She can't do it all. She can't do it all. An answer I hope someone in the world can give me. And then it's it's you question, and that's us, yeah, right? That's the yeah, reader. Yeah. She deals with these uh, uh, limits uh, in also in other uh, writings. I, I think it 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 was you know one of her. I don't know, maybe you know searches, right? To maybe find a way and and. That's how she confesses, right? That she, yeah, that Maccabeus, you know, will will have that, you know, end, right? Because what what would be the possible place, right, for Maccabea, right? <laughs> I mean, Brazil. If you if we start talking about politics, my dear, it, it it's not gonna end because you 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 probably follow. I mean, we live. We're from a country, you know, where uh, like a hundred workers were just you know found in situations analogous to slavery, right? I mean. This is what we we hear, you know, all the time. You know, if if you're not listening to the radio program that Macabea does, you know, if you're listening to, you know, news, that's it's horrible. It's really very difficult if you think that you can take care, you know, of things. <laughs> In Brazil, good luck. But yeah. there's still this hope. <laughs> I, I I think there's still hope in Lispector. Yeah, maybe that very last sentence that she talks about. What is the last one? Uh, that there is. It's very. It's very mysterious. Well, the, the time. The but can you? Yeah. Don't forget that for now it's strawberry season. Yeah. And then, and then just on its own, yes, it, it yes. begins and ends with that. With that yeah. affirmation. Yeah. Yes, that's very interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, I I love I love to think that way. Yes, yeah, I love to think that way. Maybe maybe I will have more hope in the near future, and I can <laughs> read Lee Spector with more, <laughs> yeah, with hopeful eyes. I guess <laughs> we could we could carry on talking about Lee Spector, let alone Brazilian politics for for hours, but we've run oh, out yeah. of time. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank for you. Thanks. Your expertise and um, generosity of time and to talk about this, uh, you know, intriguing and amazing book. Thank you so much. Oh yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to talk, you know, more about this factor. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>